Today, it's hard to imagine life without the mobile phone. But you know, it's not that many years ago that if we wanted to communicate over a distance, then we actually had to wave flags like this at each other. However, in 1837, two Englishmen, Charles Wheatstone and William Cook, started a telecommunications revolution that would lead us directly to the development of today's mobile phone technology. On the London and Birmingham Railway, they transmitted a message from Camden Town to Euston Station using electricity passing over wires. But what did their system actually look like and how did it work? Well, this is a modern day replica of a Cook Wheatstone needle telegraph. It uses the principles of electromagnetism, which says that if you pass a current through a coil of wire, it will generate a magnetic field. And what Cook and Wheatstone did was use that magnetic field to deflect a magnetised needle. So if you pass the current in one direction, you can deflect the needle, say, to the left. And if you reverse the direction of the current, the needle will point, shall we say, to the right. On this model here, we have four such needles, and each can work independently. So if we look at the left-hand needle, it can be moved to the left or the right. And on the screen, we have a grid of letters. So when that needle moves to the left, it's pointing to the letter H. And when it moves to the right, it's pointing to the letter I. But what about letters up here? How do we get those? Well, let's look at the letter G. In order to point to the letter G, we're going to have to move two needles. This right-hand needle is going to have to move left, and the, this needle, right. If you now follow a line through each needle, where they intersect is the letter G. So what about right down here at the bottom, the letter Y? Well, for that to be pointed to, the outer two needles are going to have to point inwards, so that if you follow the line down, they're now pointing to the letter Y at the bottom. So by moving a combination of either one or two needles, you can point to all of the letters on this screen. There are, of course, some limitations with the Cook and Wheatstone needle telegraph. The first is that to have four needles, each moving independently requires at least five conductors, and that's a lot of wire to lay along the side of the railway lines. The other limitations are concerned with the letters, and for those eagle-eyed amongst you, you may have done a quick count of how many letters are on this screen, and noticed in fact there are six letters missing. So if you wanted to send a message, we also had to develop a way of sending that message without using any of those six missing letters. However, that aside, this transmission of a message using electricity in 1837 was the start of a telecommunications revolution that has today delivered us the mobile phone.